Hey guys, remember what I told you one day in one of my wisdom videos? By the way, if you haven't subscribed to the wisdom channel already, you're missing out. It's full of motivation and inspiration. Where I'm teaching you a lot of stuff that I learned through my many years of mistakes and, you know, through my little 23 year experience. But anyway, check it out if you haven't. I'm going to put the link up there. But one thing that I mentioned one day was about, you know, um, the importance of your difference, what makes you different than the person next to you, and how that is the most precious thing that life has given you is your difference, your gift. And what am I referring to? I'm referring to the things that you could do naturally. Things that you could do just like that without even trying. You know what I'm saying? Some people are just good at drawing. Some people are good at music. Some people are good at different things. Whatever your difference is, whatever makes you, whatever sets you apart from the person next to you should be um, should be held in, in, in very high regards. You should harness that every day. You should work on that every day. You should develop it every day. You should, uh, you should read about it every day. Why? Because that's what's going to take you from point A to point Z without breaking a sweat. Because hard work does not pay off, believe it or not. Smart work pays off. Why do I say that? There are people that work harder than everyone you could think about on this planet who are poor. Why? Because they don't have the opportunities that we have. Uh, people that say that, oh, hard work is the key to life. No, it's not because slaves work hard. <laughs> slaves work harder than the masters. Are they happy? No. People in India and people in, uh, in Africa, people in, in, the, in the poor parts of, of China work harder than all of us combined. Are they happy and wealthier than us? No. So don't tell me hard work pays off. Small work pays off. Wisdom. Find opportunities and capitalize on them. There are people who went from the bottom to the top just through wisdom. They look. They, they should be really poor. They look for opportunities. And they use opportunities to bring themselves up on the ladder of success. Like the eagle. Eagles use um, wind gusts to go higher. So even though wind gusts um, usually destroy other birds, eagles go inside those things and use them to get higher in the sky you can use that metaphorically to to apply to our lives you know you know our everyday life but anyway so your ability is what's going to allow you to go higher through opportunities work on that find out what makes you different and harness that every single day because why the secret the secret to um to 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 what's the word transformation to to become something else to elevate is a change of atmosphere i mentioned that also in one of my videos how look at a lobster right you are you are never you are never really useful in the place of your origin, in the place of your birth. You're, if you're still living in the area you were born in, you can only go this far. Your worth doubles, triples, multiplies when you leave your your, your comfort zone. You know your place of origin. Look at a lobster. Like I was saying, in the water, lobster shit is just a crab. Take it out of the water, out of his comfort zone. Put him in a in, in a plate at a five star restaurant, and he sells for dozens of dollars. Look at a diamond under you know in his in his place of origin, which is under the ground. It's useless, just another rock. You take it out of the ground and then you, you know, you put it in, in, a, in the hands of a jeweler, you put it on the ring, it sells for billions, I mean for millions of dollars, right? You, you could apply it to so many things. When you leave your comfort zone, a seed, my favorite example of all time is a seed. You, um, you put it on a, uh, it's in a fruit, right? In the fruit, it's useless. It's just in a, an, an orange seed in the orange on top of some fucking orange tree is useless. You take it out of that orange, you put them back in the ground, right? What happens? It dies and becomes a giant tree. It becomes another orange tree or whatever you want to call it. So you have to be ready at one point to leave your comfort zone, leave your birthplace, and be welcome somewhere else. Because where you are, where you at right now, everybody knows you, everybody's used to you and shit. You can't really grow, you're too comfortable. Leave that place. And the gift inside of you will be stimulated, will be forced to, to unveil. So, but until that time comes, while you're in school or whatever, until that time comes, you should be working on your difference, working on your gifts, so that when you do leave your, your, your comfort zone, uh, you'll be ready, you know? Somebody says success is when preparation meets opportunity. If an opportunity comes and you're not prepared, hey. Anyway, Chief through the Alpha, morning wisdom, on my way to work and school, about to dominate my day, hope you do the same. A wise man once told me, um, in fact he got it from a quote from some book, I forgot, what it was. I forgot who, who was the author of the quote, but he said, today is the tomorrow you dreamed about yesterday. I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys heard that one already. Today, today is the tomorrow you dreamed about yesterday. You know, and the reason why I want people to remember that is because there is no tomorrow. Because when tomorrow comes, what does it become? It becomes today. I'm pretty sure you guys heard that a lot of times too. There's no such thing as tomorrow. The only thing you have is today. Uh, another man once said, yesterday is in a womb. 
Uh, no, he said yesterday is in the tomb. It's buried and dead. Tomorrow is in the womb. It's in the stomach. It's not. It's not here yet. The only place you will ever be is today. Knowing that gives you a very powerful secret, and a secret that I live by. I don't believe in tomorrow. Make it short and simple. Even when I say the future, I'm not referring to tomorrow. I don't believe in tomorrow. In fact, I live my life as if there is no tomorrow. Short and simple. Sounds cliche, but it's so simple and effective. Meaning this day, as I'm, you know, getting off work, going home, I make sure I do uh, everything that 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 I want to do and that I can do if I knew today was my last day to live. And so I'm gonna go to the gym. Oh shit, police! Fuck, I thought it was me. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the gym. I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna I'm gonna make love. I'm gonna I'm gonna do the things that I like to do in my spare time. I'm gonna do everything I can. I'm gonna play chess. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, fuck around with Hunza, you know, annoy him. I'm gonna do every single thing that I can do to make today the best day possible. Because I always believe that you have to make today so great that yesterday disappears. Which I also learned from a very wise guy. So, so with that in mind, guys, you, the secret to life is knowing that there is no tomorrow. Tomorrow is a myth. It's an illusion. In fact. Your whole life from a baby until now was just one long ass day. The only reason why we think there's a tomorrow is because we go to bed and we get up and we think, oh, it's a new day. It's not a new day. It's the same fucking day and you going to bed at night is, is, is the equivalent of you taking a nap. That's all it is. You're just taking a break. Your whole life from the moment you were born until the moment you will die will always be just one day. One day. When you understand that, you will unify all your desires and all your goals into just one. Because you realize you only have one life, which is one day. I don't believe in tomorrow, I don't believe in yesterday. I have to use those abstract words for people to understand me, but I live my life knowing that it's only one day. You know, people say, oh, in the future, I will. See, that's the reason people procrastinate a lot. People like, are lazy, but they think, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. You know what? I'll do it. One day I'll do this. One day I'll be great. One day I'll, I'll, I'll go to school. One day I'll finish school. One day, one day, one day. And when that day comes, you realize, oh, it doesn't feel like the day I was thinking about. So maybe it's just the next day. One day. And then you keep saying one day until you die. The curse, I call it the curse of one day. We all say one day. You only have one day and that day is today. When you go to sleep and you wake up, that's not tomorrow. That's just eight hours later on in this day. Remember this, guys, and use that to accomplish your goal. Use that to motivate yourself to get out and start doing things because tomorrow will never come. It will never come. Go home with that. Trust me, go home with that. That's probably the, the most important thing I could tell you on this day is that tomorrow will never come. Your future will never come. The only thing you will ever have is today get the best out of it when you go to bed at night look in the mirror like i always say and tell your day you have been dominated team 3d alpha he who wants peace must prepare for war you guys hear me say that a lot. Now, I'm quoting Vegetarius. So I don't know how to pronounce his name. But, um, yeah. Let he who wants peace prepare for war. People say, oh, I'm, I'm peace. Oh, peace. War, peace. There's no peace without warfare. I'm sorry. Because in order, for, in order to have peace, you got to be willing to combat and fight the things that threaten your peace. People that say, I don't believe in war. Then you don't believe in peace. Because what if you have a society full of peace where you believe in justice and truth? You know, and you're happy, you're peaceful, but then another society comes in and tries to destroy that. What are you going to do? You're going to say, world peace as they're stabbing you and raping your women and children? No. You're going to have to raise an army and go to war. And now, obviously, we live in, in different times today, but you can still apply that to the mind. We're still in war. You're in a battle for your mind. You're in a battle for your freedom. You're in a battle for, for, for freeing yourself of the strings that society has put on us and labeled us as puppets. I like what Dr. Manhattan said. He said, we're well, all puppets. I'm just a puppet who can see the strings. I want you guys to be puppets who can see the strings. I can see the strings. That's why I'm not worried. I know I'm being controlled by society. I know, I mean, right now, look, everything that we do is being controlled. The food that we eat, everything. We have no power over these things. But a puppet who can see the strings has a better chance of escaping when the opportunity, you know, presents itself. Now, I'm not saying rebel against the government, obviously. No, nah, I mean, we need the government. The government is here for our protection, especially in the society we live in. Without the government, we're screwed. All I'm saying is, have the mind of a re revolutionary, you know, have a revolutionary mind. You know, have a mind that's going to cause you to go out there and accomplish something completely different, something the words I've never seen before. Sit down and think, hmm, what has been accomplished? Look at the list of all the things that have been accomplished that inspire you. Now, look in the mirror and say, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna trample all of this. I'm gonna accomplish something greater than all this. That's why you have to understand that we're in this constant state of warfare for your mind because most people don't want you to think like that. They want you to just be sheep and just keep going, you know, you know, going along, go with the flow, like I always say, like a leaf blown by the wind. Go to work, go to school, get your degree, you know, raise your family, die. Pretty much that's what I want you to do. They don't want you to be the next Napoleon. They don't want you to be the next Alexander the Great. They don't want you to be the next Einstein, you know? That's up to you to do that. So you have to break out of that, that mindset of a sheep and realize that you have a mane. Most people have to look in the mirror and realize they're not sheep. They're fucking lions, ferocious lions. But they were so used to being represented as sheep and being told what to do that they forgot that they have the power to lead. My battery is about to die, so I'm going to make this video short. Remember, let he who wants peace prepare for war. You want peace of mind? You want peace for your family, your loved ones, whatever? Engage in the mental battle that we all in. Warfare. Discipline yourself. Follow the Team 3D principles. Dominate discipline direction. Dominate every area of your life, every area of your, of your expertise, anything you're gifted at. Dominate that. As far as discipline, become disciplined. Have a daily routine, you know? Some things that you do every day with a checklist that you cross off. You know, have direction, the last letter of Team 3D, direction. Have a goal, have a vision, have a purpose, have an ambition that makes you stand above all the rest. You need those things to engage in the warfare we're in. I wish you the best, Team 3D Alpha. A wise man once said, um, the problem you hate the most is an indication of your purpose on, you know, on earth. The problem you hate the most, the thing that you hate the most in life, you know, um, whether it's poverty, pain, sickness, whatever, like uh, insecurity, whatever you hate the most, not just whatever you hate, whatever you hate the most is an indication to why you were put on this earth. I don't care what you believe in, I don't care if you believe in God, the universe, nothing, whatever. I don't care what your religion, all faith is, you have a purpose and... The, the secret of finding that is to also know what you hate the most. For example, if you hate, for example, me, I'm just gonna use me as a perfect example, I hate sickness and disease. I lost a lot of my best friends and family to sickness and disease, so I grew up to hate sickness. I'm not the type of person that, you know, when something happens, you know, in life, I just go, oh, that's just life, let's move on. Oh, uh, no, nah, fuck that. I feel like uh, when something happens to my a, a loved one, whether it's a friend or family, whatever, I feel like that's a personal challenge to me. I feel like whoever or whatever caused that, challenged me came into my life my fucking territory and took something i you know i held daily to so i don't just get up and say oh that's just life no i set a goal to to remove that thing i don't care if it's cancer i don't care if it's something that's incurable to me there's nothing impossible why because anything that's impossible it simply means it hasn't been conquered yet that's what impossible means yet it's not possible at the moment because someone didn't have the the anger enough hatred to to set a goal to annihilate that thing that's what impossible means to me. But anyway, so that's what's going to motivate me my whole life. As long as my, my friend was taken from me, as long as my family members were taken from me, I will always have that hatred for sickness and pain and, and disease and all these things. So one of my personal goals in life is to conquer that, to take away pain, take away people's pains, take away uh, people's, uh, people's, the cause of people's sufferings. You know, that's just my personal goal. You know, that's why I hate seeing people in prison. I don't care what they committed, you know. Uh, uh, you know, the, the, it was something that caused that caused them to do those things. I hate seeing people in hospital beds. I see, see, I hate seeing people, you know, homeless on the street. You know, pain is is afflicting them. So my goal, because I hate pain so much, is to become as knowledgeable as possible, uh, to acquire as much knowledge, as much wisdom as I can, so that one day I can I can confront anyone who's in pain and set them free. You know, it sounds crazy, but yeah, that's my personal goal, and I was inspired because, of, like I say the pain of the past so what do you hate the most what do you hate the most you know it doesn't have to be you know a, a dignified thing whatever it is that you hate the most is a problem that you have been put on earth to solve because if you hate something really dearly that feeling will never go away so you have to do something with that feeling you can't just let it sit there use it as fuel to um to conquer life pretty much to find your passion to find your your purpose for being on this earth what do you hate? Pull out a piece of paper and write down at least five things that you hate. And out of those five things, pick the one most powerful thing that you hate. The thing that you hate the most and cross out the rest. You know, the law of focus. Use the law of focus. Focus on just one thing. And make it your goal to, to, to find a way to remove that, not just from your life, but from the life of other people. Because you were put on this earth not just to serve yourself, but to serve other people. So think about that for a second. Team 3D Alpha, what do you hate? What's his name? 
I think I believe it was the brother of President Kennedy. And he said this great quote. Only those who dare to fail greatly can ever achieve greatly. Only those who dare to fail greatly can ever achieve greatly. You have to set a goal that is so insane that people look at you crazy. People look at you like, what the fuck? And how do you how do you know what goal to set that's gonna be so grand? Look at the pain of your past. Look at the things that you suffer the most. Everybody suffered different things in their past. What pains you the most? You know? Because what pains you the most is a secret for infinite motivation. Infinite motivation. As long as you remember that that pain that was caused you or that, that wrong that was done to you and that was never healed, you will always have fire and anger to become better, to make sure it never happens to your loved ones or to you again for that matter. This is where you, this is why you have to set a goal based on that, based on your pain, set a goal that is so high because what's the problem? People set goals and quit because why? They lose motivation, they lose focus. But when you set a goal based on the pain of your past that is unhealed, you will always have motivation because that pain will always be there. That's a secret, watch it. So set a goal, set a goal, set a goal based on your your greatest, uh, your, in first we call it douleur, you know, your greatest sorrow and make that goal so great. It has to be a great goal, guys. Like I said, back to that core, it has to be a, a goal that, that, that if you, you know, that's pretty much borderline insane. You know what I'm saying? Because why? Because I always compare everything to the turtle and the cheetah. You know, I don't know if you, if you follow my channel, I always have that turtle cheetah quote. It's kind of like a, another another way to say, you know, wish for the stars, at least if you, if you fail, you, you land on top of the world. I always say, um, if you set a high goal that's even nearly impossible, even if you don't meet it, even if you don't you don't realize that goal in your lifetime, you still be above all the rest because you work hard, you work your ass off trying to make the impossible possible. I gotta keep checking because the battery is low. So I, I always compare it to a turtle and a cheetah. I always say a turtle that races against it, that that trains to race against the cheetah will never beat the cheetah, never. But when it comes back to the world of the turtles, it would be every other turtle because of the training it went to to try to beat a cheetah. So yeah, it would never beat the cheetah, but the training it will go to to try in his crazy mind to defeat the fastest animal on earth, will, will, he will take that back with him to the world of the turtles. And he'll beat the turtle that was training to race against other turtles. Think about it. Set a goal very grand, very high, very high. You a beast. I said in my other video, you think you're a sheep, you think you're, you're, you know, you're a goat, but if you look closely in the mirror, you'll notice something around your neck, it's called a fucking mane, you're lying, Team 3D Alpha.